Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about inheritance in Ruby. And inheritance basically allows us to extend the functionality of one class into other classes. So I can basically define uh, what we would call like a superclass, and then I can create subclasses from that superclass, which will inherit all of the methods, all the functionality, all of the attributes from that original super class. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry. I'm going to give you guys a full example of what this is and how it works. Um, but let me show you guys first what I have over here. So I created a class over here, which is called chef. And this chef class, I'm going to expand it. It has three methods inside of it. So the first method over here is called make chicken. And this method basically just prints out the chef makes chicken. And then it has a make salad method, same thing, prints out the chef makes salad. And then finally we have the make special dish method, which just prints out the chef makes barbecue ribs. So essentially we're just like creating a chef inside of our program. And if I wanted, I could come down here and create an instance of the chef. So I could say chef is equal to chef.new. And now that I have my chef object, I could say like chef.make chicken. And now when I run my program, you'll see it says over here, the chef makes chicken. So we're telling the chef to make a chicken. We can tell the chef to make a salad or to make the special dish. Now, let's say that in addition to having this chef class, right, this general overall chef class, we also wanted to define another type of chef. We also wanted to model another type of chef in our program. So let's say that in addition to this generic chef, we wanted to create a, a more specialized type of chef. So we wanted to create an Italian chef. So I could say Italian chef. So we're creating an Italian chef class. And down here, we'll just end this off. But let's say that our Italian chef can do everything that our normal chef can do. So the Italian chef can also make chicken, can also make a salad, and can also make a special dish. So the Italian chef can do everything that the normal chef can do. In other words, the Italian chef can have all the same methods as the normal chef. Well, I can actually use something called inheritance and I can pass down all of the functionality from inside of this chef class into the Italian chef class. In order to do that, all I have to do is come down here and after I say the name of the class, I can just make a less than sign and I can just type out the name of the class that I want to inherit from. So when I say chef right here, that means that the, the Italian chef is going to inherit all of the functionality from this chef class. So it's essentially going to inherit all of these methods. So let me demonstrate this. You'll notice there's nothing inside of this class. I didn't type anything inside of there, but I could come down here and I can create an Italian chef object. So I could just say Italian chef, chef new. So I'm creating a new Italian chef. And then down here, I can just say Italian chef dot make salad. So even though I don't have any code up here inside of this Italian chef class, not a single line of code, I can create an Italian chef object and I can still tell this Italian chef to make salad. So now when I run my program, you see down here, in addition to the normal chef making chicken, we're also able to use the Italian chef to make a salad. So over here it says the chef makes salad. So this Italian chef object has access to all of the functionality from inside of the chef class because I inherited it. So I'm using inheritance here and I'm inheriting all the functionality from the chef class. But here's a question, right? The normal chef over here has a special dish so the normal chef makes a special dish and it says the chef makes barbecue ribs. But let's say that the Italian chef is going to have a different special dish from the just generic chef. What I can do is I can actually do what's called overriding a method. So I can override the make special dish method inside of this Italian chef class. So I could actually say make special dish and we'll end it off. And then inside of here, I can put what I want the Italian chef's special dish to be. So I could just say puts and we'll say like the chef makes eggplant parm. So this is going to be the Italian chef's special dish. So now if I was to come down here and say chef dot make special dish and Italian chef dot make special dish, you'll see when I print these out or when I run my program, it says, the chef makes barbecue ribs and the chef makes eggplant parm. 
So inside of the Italian chef class, I was actually able to override this make special dish method. And that is a super useful thing to do. Um, another thing I can do is add functionality into this. So let's say that the Italian chef, in addition to doing everything that the normal chef can do, can also make pasta. So I can make a method here, it's make pasta. And down here, it's just gonna be the chef makes pasta. So now, inside of my Italian chef object, I can make some pasta. So I could say Italian chef dot make pasta and the Italian chef will be able to make pasta. But the normal chef down here doesn't have a make pasta method, so it's not gonna be able to make pasta. So let's go over what we did. Essentially, I created this class chef. This chef had a bunch of functionality. It can make chicken, can make salad, can make a special dish, right? Then I created a, another class, Italian chef. And this Italian chef could do all the same stuff as the normal chef. So what I did was I inherited all the functionality from the chef class into here, right? But there was a circumstance where the Italian chef was actually gonna have a different special dish than the normal chef. So I overrode this method. I basically defined, redefined the method inside of the Italian chef class and I was able to make it do what I wanted it to do. I also extended the functionality, so I was able to actually make the Italian chef different. So the Italian chef, in addition to doing everything that the normal chef could do, could also make pasta. And that's the basics of inheritance. We can define what's called a super class. So this chef up here, this is the super class. And then we can also define subclasses. So this Italian chef is a subclass. And it's considered a subclass because it inherits from the chef superclass. And this can be really awesome. So a lot of times in Ruby, you're gonna have different hierarchies of classes. So we'll have like the chef class, and then we'll have a subclass, an Italian chef. I could also create other subclasses like a Chinese chef or a French chef or a Mexican chef, right? I could have different, you know, uh, types of chefs, different subclasses of chefs that would all inherit the functionality from the generic chef class. So that is super useful feature in Ruby. It's a really gonna come in handy, especially if you start creating lots and lots of classes. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.